Discipline is truly an action of looking back at ourselves. As one visually and mentally sees their actions, one can realize with real eyes what they are or are not doing to themselves and thus also to their internal and external environment. However, when this is not done, all manner of sorrow and pain is consistently inevitable. This is because that which is ignored always eventually rises to the surface, bringing with it the cycle of the very problems which continuously manifest in whatever form is most convenient to the undisciplined pupil. For example, if there is a contention with food, the mind's eye will decide to use food to cover the issue, which only encircles the problem back onto itself, which inherently compounds it, making it ever harder to deal with. It would be the same with relationship issues. When a couple is fighting or having other deep-seated issues, either one or both individuals typically seek out another external relationship to try and cover their difficulties, which again encircles the problem, compounds it, and simply adds more pain and hardship. The logic behind this method is that to the mind it is easier to externalize everything and put the blame of the situation upon outside factors, instead of turning the mind's eye inwards to see the root and realize with real eyes that the only problem is a self problem. If one were to accomplish this discipline, there would be a transition from externalization to internalization, and the process of discipline could commence from the very roots of the thing. Otherwise, one is in a constant condition of apophasis, the rhetoric of bringing up an issue by denying that very issue, or to mention something by saying that it will not be mentioned. This is what the mind is doing in its external habits of undisciplined action. I know I have a problem, but I'm not going to deal with the problem. By doing this, the blind disciple asserts their justified reasoning of continued problematic action by declaiming their thesis is binded to the antithesis of said contention, which makes any movement out of the situation impossible. If one already believes that they have the answer, how can any transition away from the problem occur? It cannot, and so it will not. Besides, what is an answer except the other side of the problematic equation? When there is a seeking of answers, there must in tandem be a seeking of problems, and in this search both are obviously found together, which leads to ever-increasing conflict. Within this conflict there is no freedom. Every problem must carry its solution, and every solution its problem. The cycle must always complete itself. In other words, a food problem will always equate to more food problems and relationship issues to more relationship issues. When there are no descriptors, there can be no contemplation about whether the words in these equations are good or bad. It is subjectively up to each of us to potentially put forth a judgment upon the external by allowing it to dominate the senses and perceptions first and then making a decisive conclusion about our action after the fact. Through this allowance, life happens to us, and we do not happen to life. By inverting the process, it can be seen what was previously occurring with an externally dominated capacity that blinds the internal processes, 
convincing the true disciple that they were always wrong and needed to continuously be thwarted by outside circumstances. The external therefore ended up dominating the life force and draining it of vital energy and capacity, while the internal was not cognized and therefore was inherently ignored. The problem-solution paradigm thus continued unabated. By flowing from the inner self to the external, there is a transposition that takes place which ends the need to consume problems and therefore seek solutions to those same problems. Food can be seen for what it is, a device within this construct that is utilized to carry energy forward. The relationship can heal because one is healing themselves, which will inevitably transgress outwards. If the other does not do the same, there may be a need to move on since health does not attach itself to sickness. In either case, there is not a need or desire to cover the problem with another aspect of the same problem. Food is not sought after through guilt or complexity, and another relationship is not needed for one to feel complete and content. The inner living finds a balance of its own accord, and then there is truly a harmonization of the polarities, which is neutrality. Then one can begin the art of discipline.